Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Magical Mischief Tour. Today, we're going to be continuing on with more of Mana and Artifice. As you can see, uh, I've, I've been a little bit busy. I, I, I may have slain a Nemean lion, or, or Nemean lion. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I may have slain one or two of those, because to the northeast is some desert. And it's, it's not very difficult to get when get there when you've got wings. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to be doing some magic today. Uh, I did make a whole bunch of spells. Um, and actually, before it, before it turns into uh, daytime, or I get attacked by more phantoms, I'm going to do a sleep and make it day. Because in order to advance from level 1 to level... or from tier 1 to tier 2 in Mana and Artifice... I need to sleep on it. There you go. You've advanced to tier two. Nice. Though, strangely, I think I already had some tier two advancements. Burn you. Ha ha ha. Um, so it, it wasn't really too limiting, I don't think, except I didn't really know what I could do next in here. Uh, but now, oh my gosh, I've got so much. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's plenty to do. Um, but yeah, oh, and even that has more stuff. I'm I'm kind of eager. But let let's um, let's click here. Control right click, and you can see I still have my my light spell. I have my fling spell. I told you I would I would make, which just kind of like flings myself a little bit forward, uh, or upwards uh, depending on where I'm aiming. Crystallize, which I've found pretty darn useful. I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, break, which is as good as a I think it's a stone pick. Maybe. I don't think it's as good as an iron one, but either way, it's good for just general mining. Uh, and then, of course, Felled Oak, which is a fabulous spell. Oh my gosh. Um, and then Exchange, which is really nice as well. And Shear, which is sheerly underwhelming. All right, so you already know light makes light, right? Going with the Fling spell, I can fling myself in a horizontal manner or kind of in a, a diagonal one, just wh whatever direction I'm aiming. If I spam it a bunch... I can only get so far up in the sky before I end up coming back down, but, you know, if you don't have some kind of safety fall, like in this case I've got some fiery wings, thank you very much, because I I uh, may have traded up my wings since I've been getting more bounties. Crystallize. Uh, I, I, I've used that. I showed you last time, so I don't really need to go over that, but if I go over break, it's just more or less the same as, you know, anything else. You just use it to break things. It's pretty good like a stone tool of some sort but it's instant so it's really good and it's very low cost uh, so it's much faster than most low tier tools going with the spell touch felled oak now this one really shines okay so i've got all these connected right they're all this line of of spruce that i had growing and i've got a line of oak that's right that that was the frame rate going to like negative numbers right there but that was one click one click. Let's let's do the oak, shall we? Oh my god. And, and how does it work on the maples? <laughs> I, I am the deforester. Oh my gosh. This is just ridiculous. Yes, the, your, the FPS has completely dropped. Let, let me just collect all this stuff now. Whew. All right, so three or four clicks, and I've got phew, an inventory that's just jam-packed with different kinds of logs, some apples, lots of saplings, sticks, silkworms, and so on. Like I said, a really good spell. You just click on the base and the tree disappears. Oh, it's so good. All right, going with exchange. This one's pretty interesting. So if I put something in my offhand like this wood... I can exchange for the block that I'm clicking on with the block that's in my offhand. Uh, now, the thing is, though, is that it doesn't have like a silk touch option on it to start with. But there we go. So I can put those back. So you can see I did not get grass blocks. I got dirt blocks, which is fine. Really nice. Uh, it does not work on something like obsidian, but still uh, pretty darn cool uh, in general. And then shear. Um, well, this one works on sheep. I don't have any sheep. Does, doesn't work on this. Do, doesn't work to strip oak, you know, or any any of the, that stuff. Doesn't work on, on any of this stuff. So I, I feel like this one's really kind of sad, honestly. Uh, very, very, very sad compared to the other ones. 
All right, regardless, I've got a lot of unique spells. So there's plenty more in here. I, I did not take any damaging spells because I've got some pretty good weapons, uh, and I had no ranged attacks as of yet. I mean, I had, what was it, fire? And I was like, eh, five damage of fire. I, I could do better than that with any of my weapons. So I figured I'd wait till the next tier, which we'll take a look at that in a second. I opted to put down a bunch of these cork leaves uh, around the area for the spell, like where, where I need to put this stuff for the... Um, uh, for the spell creation because now if I take some wizard chalk all I need to do is hold down right click and it doesn't waste anything because I'm not redoing any of the uh, you know the, any of the chalk marks or anything it just happens by itself so now with these with my uh, kind of setting up a, a visual aid as well as putting down all these half leaf blocks or just like a leaf carpet as it is it's really easy to do this now. There's no problems with it. And there we go. I'm, I'm set and ready to make another spell. So that's been really nice. Well, that's not all I've done. You probably noticed that I grabbed another dwarf. Basically what I did is I bought another contract. Oh, he's, he's up and ready. Let me grab some redstone here. Click on him and buy more of these gems. It's just so worth it to get the lesser fey gems. It saves me having to mine. Um, but he oh has he has he got some no no new traits but i bought a summoning contract and got myself another dwarf why because well one i wanted to know if i would get something different uh because i've got like an inactive traveling stone turns out you can't make these you have to find them in a mining shaft and then this guy could activate it for you but he does have brilliant gems which i can use in a schematic for gem transmutation which i think makes transmuting the gems even less expensive it does cost one brilliant fey gem so let me grab one of those there we go and now i can put this in here and you'll notice that i kind of like cleared out this a little bit and i've got like this here filled with food the food is for these guys uh because one gives me xp so it's kind of an xp farm at this rate and it gives me lapis and coal Pretty much just because I'm I'm growing this food now, which I will show you that in just a moment. Now this one over here, I figured, well, maybe he'll have different traits. Honestly, he, he doesn't, and I don't think I've unlocked the bottom ones, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to be the same bottom trades that this guy has. But he does have different foods. He's got uh, pork chops and melon slices. Well, if there's anything I've got a lot of, it's melons. So I'm pretty happy about this because one, it, it gives me more coal. The other, it gives me a lot more XP. And again, I'm, I'm not even mining for this stuff. I'm just getting it for free because I've got it already build, being built uh, or mass produced on my plot here. They probably notice I've got chicken and steak. Where am I getting this from? Well, uh, I opted to take my DNA sampler and I just kind of clicked it on something else. In this case, I found a mushroom. Where did I find a mushroom? I will show you. But before that, I also have a chicken. This one uh, was a little bit I thought it would be difficult to find a chicken, and it was, but it turns out there's another way you can find chickens in this mod pack, and that is through these here. Now, I don't know if I've actually explored this one or not. Some of these I actually started putting the stuff back, but if you dig underneath, there we go, you find a chest, and often you'll find something like a rabbit's foot or chicken eggs in there, or other valuables, and uh, then you can use those to kind of find chicken eggs if you're not finding any chickens in your world because there's a lot of mobs around and sometimes it's difficult to find your regular vanilla stuff that you're looking for. So I was wandering around an autumn forest from Feywild and I came across this, a mushroom temple. Yeah, I see that there's like two Circes nearby. I don't know where they're at at the moment. But, um, and because of that, there's mushrooms here and I was able to use my DNA sampler and poke one and set up some some hopping stuff, but I also figured while I'm here, I might have a look to see what's here. Oh, there's okay, mycelium. Hello, mushrooms. There's all sorts of stuff, but um, I'm a little bit concerned because usually in this type of stuff, there's like a trap door down there. What am I seeing? Is that water? There we go. That's weird. All right. It seems to have sprung a leak down here. And 
don't think I mind that too much. It's just really weird. I was expecting like trap doors or something. I mean, there could be s traps underneath. Maybe I'll just double check. Yeah, that's just regular red stuff. These don't look like they're trapped. All right, so I think we're okay. Um, or at least I'm going, I hope we are. I'm going to open up the chest, see what we get. Mending, oh, that's lovely. Ghostly steed, enchanted book, cursed spell from tomes. Interesting. Also got a banner, some diamond horse armor, some general goodies. And it looks like that's it. It's relatively peaceful here, actually. I was expecting it to be a bit more dangerous, trapped, something, but honestly, that was kind of pleasant. It, it was probably the nicest temple experience I've had as of yet. All right, so enough of that. Let's actually take a look at the Oculus and see what kind of stuff we have ahead of us today. Uh, add a modifier to a spell using the Ritual of Alteration. Cast a Tier 2 Cantrip. Let's see about this. All right, so if I hold Control and right click, I've got two new spells. Dispel removes harmful magical effects such as poison. Great versus witches. Oh, nice. So a circle and a triangle, which by the way, if you want to do a triangle, just do that. You don't, you don't even need to draw across the bottom, just, just a point upwards, and it works really good. <laughs> and this other one, Drought, clears out water centered on you, same as a sponge. Oh, that's cool. So I don't even need sponges anymore. I can use that to, to like clear out a massive water area, assuming that it doesn't just refill itself automatically. But that that's nice. All right, Drought, this sounds good. Uh, three circles. Let's go over to a water source. We're going to try this down below and see what happens. All right, so, and circle number three. There we go. Yeah, it cleared it out. Then it all came right back again because I was completely submerged in water. But that's really cool. Really cool. And there we go. Cast a, a tier two cantrip. All right, craft a magic broom. Now, this is not the magic broom a lot of people might think it is. Uh, people might think, all right, magic broom, I can fly with that. Uh, no, it's... It's completely different in, in this mod. Uh, it's going to help me with chickens. Because uh, some of those eggs that I found, I tossed them over here and, and spawned this little dude. And then I was able to uh, put, the, put that in the, uh, the hopper over there for uh, mass-producing chickens. All right, let's, let's read about magic brooms. It has been enchanted to collect all dropped items within a radius of the container it is placed on and return them to said container. It's such a helpful construct, I wonder if there are others I can build. I'm sure I can make a more powerful version of this broom once I've gained some more knowledge. I should check back later. I can collect the broom again if I sneak up on it and grab it. All right, so this is just a couple of Intium, one hay bale, and a stick. I forgot, I made a couple charms, by the way. The, the last two things of tier one was to uh, use a bone feather charm and use an ender feather charm. Um, the bone feather charm, I think it gives you like a slow fall effect or it stops you from taking fall damage for a time. So I don't really need that right now, but I might if I like die and come back. So I'm going to put that in with my like magic kit here. Then the other one, ender feather charm. This allows you to teleport back to your spawn point, just like the recall amulet. So I figure again, that's something if I die would be good to have here. So I, I have backup gear. Um, is, is basically it. it. It didn't cost as much. I mean, you can see the recipe here for what it costs. It's not nearly as expensive as the other one. So this is much more approachable if you don't want to spend all those diamonds. That being said, let's put in the ingredients for the next bit, which is a magic broom. All right, and looking at the, uh, the image over there, I need a circle and then some kind of like downward fish or something. And I've tried casting here before, but because this uh, rune forger is in the way, I click on here and weird things happen. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try... A circle and it worked you can see it actually appear here and then um, this thing it worked cool I love the animation and everything it's really nice so I've got plans for this actually because this chicken is is over here pooping out eggs all over the place and I I, I can't have that so we're going to set up a little storage spot for it there we go, one barrel, and because this is a little farm spot and I don't want it to like dehydrate or anything, I'm going to put the barrel above the water. I, I don't think that you can waterlog barrels because they're the same size. So I'm going to click here and hope 
that it picks up stuff. So let's try tossing out the this mostly broken wand. Oh, there we go. Nice. And then I can just access this and pick the stuff up. So that should pick up any of the eggs that this little chicken leaves laying around. And uh, at least it'll keep things a little bit cleaner. All right, we've got two of the 11 things. We're not getting through all of this today, I can tell you that. Um, craft a mana crystal fragment and a mana crystal. Oh, I th th this should help. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think about these. All right, mana crystal fragments are made from chimerite gems, or chimer chimerite, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, uh, and some purified vintium dust, and a lot of symbols. Um, now, here's the thing. Normally, I don't have any of these, but I did do a little bit of mining, and because I was t officially tier 2 with, like, level 15, even though I hadn't slept yet, as I mined stuff with my pick specifically emeralds, I got chimerite gems from mining the emeralds that I found underground. So that was really nice. And I can use these to make those now, which is really important, I think. Oh, and I'm going to just take this Vintium Dust. I don't need to leave that over here, because that's just kind of silly at this point. All right, in doing a search in the book, I'm able to find Mana Crystal Fragments. And because I can't keep the recipe up, in JEI, but I can with this, which makes it really nice to cast with. <laughs> when you're doing the, the casting over the mana weaving altar, I'm finding that this is really making a big difference. And there we go, that that should be all of it, right? Oh, shoot. I put Vintium Dust in there instead of Purified. All right, let me grab that back out. Just shift clicking takes the stuff out, and then I can put the Vintium in here, grab one of those. And then a bunch of chimerites. There we go, and just getting the right amount works. Apparently I don't need to cast first or last, it just needs to be done in general. There we go. So this, charge with pedestal charging, or hold in your hand and hold right click to charge. Oh, and it just sucks up my mana. Okay. And now I have a backup one, mode infusion. So... If I shift right click, does that change it? Mode supplement. And as you can see here, Chimerite, let's see, I need to be at least, oh, mage is at least level five. Okay, can mine it. And then next are diamonds, which level 10. I'm at 16 right now. And then say no mage under level 20 would see it if it's for, is it for coal? Okay, so what I need to do at this point is level myself up a bit with some more casting. Uh, but, I mean, for me to do that, it make it simplest so I can get more Chimerite, then I can, then I can just mine coal and get a whole bunch of it. Um, but I, I have other plans for that, too. So the Mana Crystal will have to wait. But for now, I've got three backup amounts with 250, which is almost my whole magic bar or mana bar right now. All right, craft a spell with complexity 35 or more. This is something that I'm interested in doing because there's a lot more in here to choose from. Uh, we went from touch and self to now we have projectile, sword, axe, bow, and shield. And these bound items can be really cool, but they can also be a bit troublesome. Uh, it depends on how you do it. Uh, I, I did mess around in another world just to see how these worked, but the bound sword and the bound axe, once you cast it, it, it constantly drains mana. Uh, and then as you hit something with it, it then takes away the amount of mana as well. So if I choose like um, this bound axe, and then I, I it, you because this is red, you can't actually make anything yet. You have to choose something to put onto it. Let's say that I put frost damage on it, so I got a frost axe, right? Well, it does five damage when you hit it, and it costs twenty two point five mana when you attack something. But it also has an upkeep cost while it's active. So these two items are really difficult to work with. Um, the bound bow, on the other hand, only uses the mana when you shoot things. And then um, it, you don't even need arrows. It, it actually, you're, you're using the mana. So this one's pretty good, but it's going to be low damage unless you increase that. The bound shield, on the other hand, uh, you can you can actually defend and block things and do damage. But if you hold the shield up, it's going to have the ongoing cost that the uh, like the sword and the axe have. So it's it's kind of like a little bit better than the other two in a way because you you have to block and it doesn't have to be that as well. You can do something like um, fling. 
So when they hit your shield, uh, if it hasn't recharged yet, because it'll be like one second for, before it charges or something, but it, it'll most likely fling away an enemy that bounces on there, which is pretty cool. And it'll cost you 21.6 when that happens, and if you're holding the shield up, not just holding the shield. So I was thinking either a projectile or a bound bow. Now the bound bow, the projectiles actually, they, they fly like an arrow. Um, but the projectile just goes in a straight line. It's slower to fire though, so it's kind of got drawbacks. Um, but I always like frost damage. And I only have one uh, damage modifier that I'm allowed to put in here. Now there's other things like poison and gravity well and stuff. And, uh, some people might have different, uh, you know, thoughts on what these are like uh, like gravity well for instance this just makes things fall faster so we, you you have to be aware of what that does that that combines well with other things like slow fall or it, so that if you currently have slow fall you don't take damage but if you have gravity well as well then you can actually fall rapidly and not take damage when you hit the ground so you're not like slowly floating anymore there's poison in here. You can activate things with redstone and so on. Uh, summon workbench is pretty cool. It allows you to just open up a crafting table. Earth sky, I'm not too th worried about it. It lifts blocks up into the sky. Collapse, it makes blocks fall. Divination, I found that a bit glitchy in my mind. It, it kind of helps you find blocks that are nearby. I'm, and I'm at such a low level that it's not really that useful. Felled oak, uh, yeah, you already know about that one. Levitation. Uh, this allows you a limited version of creative flight for about 30 seconds. It's very, it's slow to work, but it works really nicely. Uh, exchange, I already have that, and shear, yeah. So I'm just going to make a frost damage spell with a projectile, but I'm going to increase the damage because the complexity over here is 20 out of 40 for what I can do right now. So I'm going to increase that to as high as I can get it. Oh, there we go, that's too high. Notice the arrow turned red. We bring it back down to 38. Now we could increase the speed a little bit. You notice when I add this modifier, the ingredients change and everything. So everything is just kind of like that much more expensive. Look at all the stuff we're going to need for this. Ugh. But remember, it's a completely reusable and renewable spell. So just by adding that, the complexity didn't change. But upping this one, it did. So it's now 1.2 times as fast as it was before. You can always have a delay or uh, increase the range or something, but I'm not too bothered by it. Uh, I think the range is going to be fine on this. I just need something that I can kill things perhaps in the nether because I'm thinking I'm going to head there soon. Clicking this, it's going to make the scroll, which is going to take a bit of time. There we go. And as always, you can just right click to see a list of this stuff and it makes it quite a nice and easy shopping list. This is going to be a little bit expensive with a, a diamond sword. And we've got Mystic Focus now as well. I don't think I have any snowballs, but I know where some snow is, so I can shovel that easy. Uh, a bunch of different colored runes. Shouldn't be a problem with all the uh, dyes that I have going on. And that's about it. All right, so this will take me a little bit to collect all this stuff, and I will be back. And there we go. That was quite the feat. Uh, as it turns out, getting all these things together, most of the materials weren't that bad. It was, it was just the sheer quantity of the different color of of these rune glyph things. Gosh, it was, there was so many. So I ended up making almost all of the colors. It was pretty intense. <laughs> anyway, let's just make this and get it done and over so I get my magic spell. There we go. Frost projectile. All right, there we go. And you can see it's actually kind of a costly spell. At the top, you can see how much of it is being used when I cast it, but... There we go. I now can do this as long as I have mana. Um, in fact, let's see what happens when I run out. Yeah, I'm not... Do, do I have to have this? Oh, I see. Okay, so I actually have to take a second to use this. It doesn't automatically supplement me. Oh, that's kind of sad. Huh. This actually goes really far, so I'm not so concerned about the range on this thing. It is a little bit slow at long distance, but <laughs> it works really good. Um, and uh, I actually leveled up to past level 20 uh, just getting all the materials because I ran out of stone, so I had to mine some, and I figured I'll use my break spell, which I did. And uh, I 
Of course, got a lot of cobblestone and stuff, but I also found some coal and I got to level 20. So I mined it. And I've got more chimerite gems. Or chimerite gems, whatever you want to call them. It's so good to be able to just do this a whole bunch of times. <laughs> this is really nice. Oh, I'm, I'm like three gems short, I think, from getting... No, I'm going to need I'm gonna need a bunch more. All right, let me go mine up some coal, and uh, I'll finish making this, and then we can get that completed as well. So I'm back from mining. And I did a little bit of building as well. I figured I'd start kind of improving the base. You can make these really cool uh, chimerite sandstone uh, blocks and other such like that by, by using the mana weaving altar. Just look up stuff by mana and artifice and you can find some really cool building materials in there. I also found just by holding some dye in my offhand or clicking it on my existing light sources, it changes the colors, which is really nice. And I really like these because they're, they have like a scintillating moving texture. Oh, it's so good. I also took the opportunity to build out a new area here because uh, I'm, I may have enough Chimerite crystals, but in order to make the mana crystal that I need, I still need a Moat of Magic, which has a recipe of this, the Ritual of Forgotten Lore, and I have a feeling I'm going to need more of these moats. So I built a little shrine dedicated exactly to this, and I've got it all set up and ready to go. Uh, I used the lectern, ink sacks, feathers, books. Books I've pretty much just been getting from all of my, like, running around in villages and stuff like that, as well as, you know, harvesting things. But let's give this a go, shall we? And there we go. I now have a little teeny tiny moat. Oh, magic. <laughs> little tiny scintillating thing. And I'm just going to pop it in here. Lovely. Okay, I now have one of these, a mana crystal, which I'm just going to plonk this down right there. Looks somewhat appropriate. I might I might change the block that it's sitting on or stand it up a little bit, but I think if I like use my mana, it'll probably work a lot, re recharge a lot better. Um, also, um, I was told a little, little secret tip. See if you can guess how I was able to get this spell to do this special effect. In this case, I'm using the self-fling spell, and I get lot, lots of farting. I also learned having your hunger bar full definitely adds to the speed that you uh, replenish your mana as well. And uh, one last tip before we call it for the day. Uh, let's take out a spell, shall we? That uh, frost damage spell that I was working with earlier. I have not modified it with anything except what I did in the table, which, if you recall, let's see, we had uh, projectile, frost, and then I had uh, increased it with damage and speed. Now, you don't have to have these to start with. You can actually add them on with the alteration ritual, um, and then you'll you'll gain the ability to do this that I can do in this table afterwards. So if you've added those already in the table, then you don't even need to do the alteration ritual to add those on. It's just the same recipes anyway. So if I control right click this spell itself, you can see that there are the little pluses and minuses in here. I can actually like increase or decrease this and you've got your complexity and the different speeds and stuff. I ended up reducing the damage by one uh, just so I could increase the speed that it shoots by 2.6. So now it, it goes really fast. And I'm, I'm much happier with that. It, I've been able to hit things a lot quicker and easier with this spell in, in tow. Hopefully I didn't just kill something really far away. Oh well. But yeah, it, it's been really nice. So that's definitely something I found very useful and I'll be uh, wanting to know. I'll, I'll definitely be using that in the future. So there you go. One more episode in the pipe. We're going to be doing a lot more mana and artifice in the future, uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to get prepped for a trip into the nether because I'm needing uh, more and more frequently like blaze parts or uh, like different nether materials and ores. So uh, we're, we're definitely going to be prepping for that. And if you don't know how to get into the nether, stick around because I'll be sure to show you if you haven't read your book. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, 
don't be afraid to uh, click the notification bell. Come by on Twitch and give us a visit. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.